Hello everyone and welcome back to another Space Weather Update. My name is Alexis. This is the Ascension Diaries. It is Friday, January 26th, around 8.14 a.m. in Phoenix, Arizona. And I have a small amount of space weather to inform you about. We've been expecting an impact of a geomagnetic storm for the last couple days. It could still happen today after I upload this video, but it hasn't shown up yet. So we're mostly going to look at the anomalies on the Russian electromagnetic charts of earth as well as the italian and we're going to keep this video short and meditate at the end so let's move into i'm just going to show you very quickly these anomalies now if you don't understand anything about what i'm saying on my channel right now please go to youtube.com ascension diaries go to my channel go to the first line here of education for space weather. It should give you a much better idea about what the heck I'm talking about and why I bother studying these charts. In the last few hours, there has been a burst of electromagnetic amplitude that has appeared in Russia. It also appeared in Italy, a similar looking blast at around the same time. So Earth, I would say on a broader level, has likely been impacted by at least some kind of electromagnetic stoking. If it was Earth-based, if it was space-based, I can't quite tell, but it looks like it was a similar vibration picked up in both places, which makes me think that it was a larger, more Earth-based experience and not as much of a direct uh, technological input or something like that, but I could be wrong, but that's just my guess. The other locations where this is also being tracked other than Russia and Italy are California, Saudi Arabia, Lithuania, Alberta, Canada, New Zealand, and South Africa. On this particular moment where my my mouse is, this is the 22nd of January where New Zealand significantly uh, showed electromagnetic amplitude in the area that these measurement stations are, therefore implying that maybe there was a lot more lightning occurring in the area than everywhere else in the world but that is our major signifier. So let's look at the lightning really quick and where it's at today. Although we may not see the Aurora Borealis up in the North and South Pole because of the full moon's light, as well as the potential that we are completely being missed by that big wave, that geomagnetic storm we were expecting could just float right past Earth, maybe miss us slightly. But what isn't missing us is all this lightning that's grounding into the Caribbean and Texas, as well as Australia, the three more major, and of course in the Ascension Island area here in the ocean, which also experienced an earthquake yesterday, which is a little bit of an anomaly. So we had earthquakes over in San Bernardino in the last two days. We had one out here in Ascension Island, and it seemed like there was some activity kind of moving across the ocean in this direction, I would say just kind of from San Bernardino to Ascension Island across down when I was looking at the earthquakes crudely before like so across this way so Puerto Rico and then Ascension Island and here to here to here that's where my brain was looking here to here to here over and over so whatever this potential line is I think that was important and I don't have any reason why I think that or what's going on. I just, I'm telling you the instinctual thing as well as I instinctually rummage through all of this research and give you the highlights, right? So lightning's grounding over here. We have a little bit of an earthquake over here in very Northern Mexico. Lightning grounding over here, no earthquakes over here. Okay, so checking in next with the Let's see, the Mayan calendar today is the white resonant mirror. It is, this is, this is the energy behind it. It says, I channel in order to reflect, inspiring order. I seal the matrix of endlessness with the resonant tone of attunement. I am guided by the power of the heart. So in today's meditation, we're going to work on the heart and we're going to welcome in gently whatever wave that is trying to maybe move past if it hasn't yet to go by gently. I'm irritated right now. And so I have a feeling there is some solar wind. There's some irritation coming through right now. We are seeing a slight uptick in the solar wind speed, but spaceweather.com is saying they're canceling the geomagnetic storm that we're expecting today. So they're already canceling it before the day is over. I'm not going to do that, but 
I have reason to believe your weekend may be a little bit more smooth and easy going when it comes to the energies, but please just keep an eye on it because those things can change in an instant. Keep an eye on the solar wind speed chart and see if there's any missing data like we had back, I assume, when the Russian and uh, Italian chart may have blasted was maybe around this missing data time. Could have been. Eh, that might be a bit of a stretch, but it's not too far. And see if it starts spiking or doing anything crazy. The last three days solar flares. Here's the three days ago activity. One day ago activity in the middle here. And the recent day activity is not as high. But there have been two sneaky, very high C-class flares that happened in the last 24 hours that didn't alert you on your app. Those of you who have downloaded Space Weather Live app get alerted when solar flares go into the M-class range or this yellow area or X or X10, which hasn't happened, but it could. So we got our alerts ready, but they won't alert you for a C9 most of the time. So that one kind of went in under the radar the last 24 hours, that double blast of solar flares basically from the 26th basically the 26th UTC anyways, right as the 26th began, we got that nine and then another M9, or sorry, C9, a C9 and another C9, almost an M1, but not quite. Little bit of activity still. I would say our, our quietest day for solar flares was probably the 25th. And so the 24th had a bunch and even into the 26th, we got a couple little ones, but that could in increase. But I'm thinking now, at least according to what the sun is looking like now, the solar sunspots that cause the flares are moving away. They're going to the other areas of the sun. Their sun is rotating away these sunspots. So that solar flaring episode, like you saw, we only got a C9 in the last 24 hours. The intensity of the solar flares may go down for us because it's not going to be as earth facing. But when these flares hit the limb and they kind of turn away and they kind of break connection from our visual or our electromagnetic direct contact, there is also often a flare that'll happen. I've noticed right at the corner or right at the limb. And it'll come also when it rotates towards us and it attaches magnetically, we can see it all of a sudden. That attachment can sometimes also cause a flare to happen. But I'm not seeing too many of those coming towards us, even though there's a little bit of unnamed sunspots coming towards us. These guys are going to be on their way, maybe flare in the direction of Mars and Venus a little more, but I think we're done our episode with these guys. I could be wrong, but I think it's slowed down. And what we're going to watch now is this coronal hole that just keeps rotating back towards us. It's split in half now. It was once one big piece, which I can show you a picture of in a second. But now that they're kind of splitting and splitting between the meridian or between the poles here, we're going to get solid solar wind coming out of here, but no explosions come out of these. These aren't the explosive activity on the sun. This is a, a weak area where the gravity is not as strong. And so the solar wind just kind of leaks out of them. And so the solar wind speed might go up as this is facing us and could be kind of facing us for the next couple days. We might be in a heightened solar wind, which will also irritate you very much. So whenever we get too much solar wind, we're going to get irritated. So that's basically the kind of like the baseline of what I'm checking. How irritated is everyone going to be today? Well, a little more irritated than average, but nothing we can't handle yet. But we're on that precipice of things being interesting, if you know what I mean. We just exited the, the full moon in Leo. Our next new moon is going to be February 9th. And it's going to be in Aquarius, the opposite of Leo. So these energies are all going to rotate through it themselves until the 9th of February. All the energies are going to kind of go quieter and quieter and quieter, at least from the moon side of things until the 9th. So the moon's going to calm down now. So those of you really affected by the moon, you're on the come down of the intensity now. So ride, enjoy the ride, enjoy the smoothness geomagnetic storms aren't coming in let me show you that coronal hole really quick and how it's kind of adapted over the last few months this is the final note of today's video before we start our meditation with the global consciousness dot so september october november december december january the same coronal hole just keeps rotating around kind of changing shape every time but it's it's just been there that one little weak point 
It's kind of like the butt crack of the sun in a way, it seems like. And so the butt crack was most prominent in December. This is when my own dad was like, hey, did you hear about what's going on on the sun? And I was like, yes, <laughs> I have. And it was this. And so this is what makes the news because it's so easy to see. It's so big. It's so distinct. And this is a great way to initiate people into caring about the sun is, hey, the coronal holes are pretty cool. Let's look at that. But let's be honest, the flares are my favorite. They are the party and the party is seemingly slowing down right now. So let's meditate. As the global consciousness dot moves into green, I've already shot this video once and we were in the yellow and guess what? It didn't work out. So we're going to do this video. This one's going to stick. I can feel it. And let's get into our meditation. So we're going to do three breaths on the third. You're going to receive a vision. So let's prepare ourselves. So breath number one, we're going to send the good vibes out. Breath number one, breath number two, and then breath number three, we're going to receive. Okay, so breath one. Hold, create good intentions in your mind. Breathe those good intentions out. Bigger breath the second time. Breathe it in harder. Fill up those lungs. Reach your hands up. Help you even take in more air. This is what the saguaros taught me. All right, good intentions and breathe them out. Breathe it all the way out. Okay, breathe in. Close your eyes. Hold your breath. Receive your vision. Breathe out. One more vision breath. Clarify that vision. Breathe it out. Okay, if you haven't seen anything yet, please continue meditating. Eventually you relax enough and some information will start flooding in. That's how it works. Just take your time. But for me, I'm going to let you know I saw a mountain with a stream coming down the center of it. And this video has been another honor of mine to bring to the collective as usual. Those of you interested in following me and increasing our relationship, please go to my Patreon. Patreon.com slash Ascension Diaries. Sign up free or otherwise. Join the crew. Get the emergency updates. They won't be these fluffy videos all the time, but I'll be sure to let you know if there's any sort of unexpected changes in the space weather that could throw off your whole day and you're not sure why. You'll be getting an email from me if that is the case. And a lot of people do rely on that and appreciate that. If you're not able to sign up on Patreon, I always have my Telegram and my Instagram and my Twitter. I'm constantly on there. You get lots of information from me there. But it is more of the fluff. So if you want the direct stuff and the best quality information, go to my Patreon, sign up, and that will go to you directly. And it will support the channel immensely. Thank you so much for your comments, your likes. Thank you for sharing me to other people in your life that appreciate this kind of work. And I am interested in going on other people's shows and podcasts so I can expand, reach out, meet new people. So if that is something that you would like to work with me on, please reach out. You can reach me through all the social medias or my website or my email, ascensiondiaries at gmail.com. All options available. I try and make it easy to contact me so we can keep up the fun the best we can. Until next time, I love you all very much. And thanks for all of your feedback. I learned so much from your feedback. This research has been very enriching. Bye, guys. <laughs>